Hey, welcome to the Eco Home Building Guide. I'm Mike Reynolds. This is a house that we're building while we create a video series documenting all the steps of high performance house construction. Uh, we're going to show you it is not that expensive to do, it's not that hard to do. Um, we got a slab on grade, no basement, passive heating and cooling. We're going to show you how to keep your house warm in the winter but cool in the summer. And we've got a lot of fantastic technology going. We've got radiant floor systems, we've got a couple of heat pumps. We got a wall insert air exchanger system going on, a green roof where we're going to be growing food. So that said, we're going to go back to the beginning when we're here laying out the house on the lot. Uh, this is only episode one. Please follow along. Hope you enjoy. First step with the building project is you want to pick a lot you like. Drainage is important. You got to like where you live. Uh, but also, if you have a look around, uh, we're facing south. A lot of deciduous trees to the south. So basically we're going to get a lot of shading in the summer and we're going to get a lot of heat from the sun in the winter. So. The concept of passive heating and cooling is really quite simple. You just determine where south is, you point your windows at it. As a house shape and orientation, rectangular along the east-west axis is best. That lets you maximize your south facing windows. The further you are from the east-west axis and the less windows you have facing south, the less heat you're going to gain. So have as many windows as you can facing directly south. They'll gain more heat in the day than they're going to lose at night. So it's, it's a net gain. It's worth it. And the reason it's called passive heating and cooling is because there's no effort required and there's no moving parts. You simply have to design your overhangs and your shading so that they let the low winter sun reach far into your house. And in the summer when the sun's high in the sky, your windows are shaded. We also selected the location of the house on the lot to minimize the amount of mature trees that we were going to have to cut and to pick the most sensible spot for a septic system. In this case, we were fortunate that there was a natural sunken area to one side with the perfect soil conditions, so very little excavation was needed for the septic bed, and after it was built up, the level would actually match the level of the house perfectly for uh, outdoor living space. For the final placement of the house on the site, we picked the highest point, and then we built up to that using compactable fill, and in order to ensure that it was a really solid base, we tamped it after every foot of fill was added. Next came a layer of clean crushed stone. It's going to be in here that we're laying down all of our plumbing infrastructure. We then built forms and we raised them. You can also do this by driving stakes in the ground and building up to your final level. We just thought this might be a little bit easier for disassembly. With a slab on grade, there's no basement where you're going to be doing your plumbing afterwards. So it needs to be laid out at the beginning and then it gets set right into the concrete slab floor. So take your time, once you pour concrete on top of this you will not be moving any drains. This is also the time that you're going to want to run any electrical lines, central vac, uh, along with your main power and water lines, anything you want to have set into the floor and uh, you direct this stuff straight to your mechanical room. Okay, here I'm wrapping Upanor's pre-insulated PEX pipe that's going to be for cold and hot water lines. But because it's R2 insulation um, and Lead for Home asks for R4 insulation around all hot water pipes, we're adding an additional layer of R2 insulation um, in order to get uh, to make sure that our, our water doesn't cool down or warm up because it's in direct contact with uh, unconditioned ground here. So there's episode one of the video series. The idea here is only to give you an overview of different topics. For greater detail of anything you see, go to ecohome.net. We have a building guide there that's going to walk you through all this stuff. Uh, come back to the next episode where we lay down insulation, uh, a lot of it, uh, vapor barrier, radiant tubing, concrete. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of the series.